So a week from today, we're going to go into the lab and perform this experiment and determine the molar mass of an acid by using an acid-based titration. And we haven't talked about acids and bases yet in detail because that comes in the second semester. But that doesn't mean we can't do the, do the experiment and do the calculations if you're given enough information. Um, so everything, actually, um, hold on a second. There's another, did you get, you wouldn't get this guy. This was on the bottom. Thank you. Yeah, I should have pulled it out. Let me, let me show this in the middle. Thanks. So in addition to the, um, the method document, I've created this discussion document here. And it's in the same folder as the, um, the method document. And it'll, it'll, it'll tell you most of what I'm going to tell you today. But number one rule for any experiment actually is to keep your eye on the prize. What are we after? We're after the molar mass of the acid. Yep. Didn't even last one stroke. Got this one. The molecular weight, molar mass, they're interchangeable terms, is equal to the mass of the acid in this case, right? mass of the acid. And we're gonna use, we're after citric acid. Right? It's the same stuff that makes uh, oranges and lemons sour. Divided by the number of moles of acid. Okay? Citric acid is a solid. So when we, when we determine the number of moles, all we have to do is weigh it out. Right? And then when we put it in solution, we're going to titrate it to find out how many moles that is. All right, so we need to understand something about titration. <clears throat> titration, well, there it is. Titration is a term that has broad meaning. In our case, we're going to use it in terms of acids and bases, but it can be used in almost almost any situation. You can titrate. What you need is a solution for which you know the exact concentration of the what I term the analyte in the solution. Exact concentration. So when you deliver a certain amount of it, so many milliliters. Right, um, Right, molarity equals um, moles per unit volume. So if you deliver a certain volume and you know its concentration, then you can calculate the number of moles. Right? You know the volume, you know its concentration, you know the number of moles that you delivered. Now, what you have to do is find out, all right, when, as I'm delivering, when do I know to stop? Because right? when you stop is when you know the volume. Right, so we have a special device called a burette. Anybody ever seen a burette? The long glass tube. That it's got a valve here right, that you you manipulate, and then it's got a, a tip on it, very fine tip, so that it only lets out very small drops. Well, it can it can let out streams if you want, but you usually don't want that. Because you go past the point where you're supposed to be um, ending your titration. Um, and then you got a clamp that holds it up there for you. And you got um, a beaker down here, usually, or an Erlenmeyer flask with something in it. Okay, so this is marked in milliliters and tenths of milliliters. Let's see, yeah, fine markings there. So you can measure down to a tenth of a milliliter very easily. This glass burette, though, is not like a graduated cylinder. Graduated cylinders are marked zero at the bottom and 
the big number at the top, zero to 50, zero to 100. Burettes are the other direction. They start at zero. And our burette goes down to 50 milliliters. Okay? The reason for that is if you start at zero and you deliver a certain amount and stop, then all you have to do is read the number and you got your volume. So that's important for when you when you read the value off of here, you read from top to bottom, not from bottom to top. So if it's between, say, um, well, I don't know, let's see, this is maybe 30, and this is maybe 35. And if it's between here, oops, this is 36. It goes 35 to 36. So if it's halfway in between, it's 35.5, not 36.5. Okay? That confuses some students. <laughs> All right. Now, what if you don't start at zero? Right? What if you do triplicate titrations? Right? You titrate uh, one beaker, and then you want to titrate another one, and then you want to titrate another one. All you need is where you started and where you ended. Right. The final minus the initial will give you the volume that you delivered. Yeah. Okay. Now, how do we know where the end point is? Why do we know when to stop that we call it the end? Point? Well, in our case, we're going to use uh, a color indicator. Um, we've got our, our citric acid down here in solution, aqueous. You have to dissolve it before you can react it. And we've got a base up here, sodium hydroxide. Aqueous. And we know the exact concentration of that sodium hydroxide because the first thing we do is titrate sodium hydroxide against uh, acetic acid, which is a known concentration. And we calculate the exact concentration of sodium hydroxide before we even start. Okay. That's the first step. Once you know the exact concentration of your sodium hydroxide, then you can use it to find out how many moles of citric acid you have. Okay. So the whole idea behind titration in, is an equivalence. Something's equivalent to something else. In our case, what's equivalent is the number of hydrogen ions is equal to, exactly equal to the number of hydroxyl ions. And that gives us water. So if we know the moles of hydroxyl delivered, we can determine the moles of hydrogen that are delivered by citric acid. Okay, that's the net equation for our reaction right there. <clears throat> okay, the um, the problem arises. If you don't know how many I, how many hydrogens are delivered per mole of citric acid, actually there are three. So for every three hydroxyls, you have one citric acid. Okay. So if this is instead of that, say it's this, I abbreviate citric acid. It's got three hydrogens on it. Then you need three hydroxyls to balance that and give you three waters. That's the trick in this reaction. We know that citric acid has three hydrogens, acidic hydrogens, we said. We're gonna neutralize all three of them. That means if you know the volume that you delivered here times its concentration, then you know the number of moles of hydroxyl, right? But it takes three of those for every one of these. So actually the moles of citric acid is one third that value. Okay, so that way we can tell this is how many moles of citric acid because it's a third of the moles of hydroxyl we delivered. Um, oh, that's not the right one. This one, excuse me, <laughs> moles of citric acid and the mass. Once you find the moles of the acid and you got the mass of the acid, you can calculate the molecular weight, the molar mass. Okay, um, well, your, your uh, uh, document here 
gives you the balanced equation for citric acid and sodium hydroxide right there at the bottom of the first page. And you can see that um, citric acid is an acid because we put three hydrogens first. Those are the three hydrogens right here. Right there, the first three hydrogens. Well, I guess I better, I'm going to, right, there it is. So these three hydrogens right here are the ones that are being neutralized by three hydroxyls here. Okay. That stoichiometry is necessary to get this right. Okay, once we know that. Okay. Now, uh, let's see. That's more discussion of the same here. All right. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about um, the proper indicator to use. We're going to use a color indicator called phenol phenylene. Okay. And it changes color in the basic range yeah, around 9.2 or 3, something like that. So it's not exactly at the point where we get equivalents of these two, but it's very close and close enough. And it's a lot easier than uh, doing what we haven't learned yet. <laughs> using a pH meter to find out the, the actual equivalence point. We're going to use this. This gives us the end point. So we try to pick the end point. The pH, the color change here, is that point at which um, we hope the equivalence point is right there. So what happens? Well, when it goes from uh, acid, acid is clear, no color. When it goes to this point where it's where it's equalized, once we've equalized it, now we're putting extra hydroxyls in there and they got no place to go. Right? So they're making the solution basic. Once it goes to basic, it turns to pink. And that change from clear to pink, that's where we want to stop. When we add enough solution to where one drop makes it go pink and stay pink. You'll notice when we do this, uh, as we're adding these drops of sodium hydroxide, it'll hit the solution and go pink and then disappear. Because then when it gets equilibrated, it's, it's, um, it's no longer basic in that localized region. So once it goes pink and stays pink with, with one drop, that's where you want to read the volume, okay? And we're going to use the same indicator for standardizing our sodium hydroxide. Okay, I'm working backwards. <clears throat> we need a standardized concentration for sodium hydroxide. The problem with sodium hydroxide is it's not stable over time. We start off with a concentration, but over time it deteriorates. It loses, it loses this form, and actually it changes to... Uh, plus um, H2CO3. Carbon dioxide dissolves in water and makes carbonic acid. Okay. So this is the reaction that occurs with sodium hydroxide when it sits for a long time. Okay. And what it does is it produces sodium carbonate. Or maybe sodium hydrogen carbonate is more like. Um, no, sodium carbonate. That's what it produces. And then we have, let's see, what do I have left over? Water. Yeah, that's not balanced yet, but you get the idea. Um, anyway, uh, that's why we have to standardize the sodium hydroxide right before we use it and get a value for its concentration. And that's what this uh, bottom equation is for right here. This one, this compound right here, you'll notice is acetic acid. Acetic acid is very stable over long periods of time. And we know exactly what that concentration is. In fact, um, I bought it from, from a supply house and it's this concentration. Molar. 
Okay, and it's that for for almost ever. So, what we also know is that when we react acetic acid, uh, HC2H3O2, with sodium hydroxide, the exchange, the stoichiometry is one to one because there's only one hydrogen here, one hydroxyl there. And it gives us sodium acetate plus water. So we know for every mole of hydrogen delivered, there's a mole of hydroxyls, okay? So that's why we can say that if we know the number of moles here would be what? Since this, they're both in solution, <clears throat> we have um, the molarity of the base and we have the molarity of the acid. And we know the molarity of the acid. So if we multiply that times the volume delivered, that's equal to the number of moles of acid delivered or the moles of hydrogen delivered because they're one to one. Well, we don't know the molarity here, but we do know the volume of the base because we put, we delivered a certain amount of base to a known volume of acetic acid. In fact, the method calls for, let's go down and look. The method calls for, let's see, those are discussion questions. We'll get back to those in a second. Uh, here we go. Um, 10 milliliters, 10 milliliters of acetic acid. Exactly 10 milliliters of acetic acid. 10 milliliters of acetic acid. And we have a known concentration, 873 molar. Multiply those two together, we get um, actually not moles, but millimoles. Right. So that would be 8.73 millimoles is what's contained down here. Now we're not citric acid anymore. This is acetic acid. Yeah, let me use my abbreviation. I use... Uh, H uh, AC for acetic acid. Um, so we know that we put exactly that many moles of hydrogen ions in there. Acetic acid, since they're one to one, that's the moles of hydrogen ions. Okay. Well, we don't know what this one is, but we do have a value for this one, the volume of base, because we're gonna deliver it until they're, they're equal. And we know because the color changed. And once we know the color changed, then we know this value. Well, now we have an equation where we've got this one. Uh, in fact, I think they've, there's part of the discussion up here. Hold on a second. Uh, here it is. So the moles of sodium hydroxide equals the moles of acetic acid right there. Uh, that means the moles of sodium hydroxide equals molarity of acetic acid times its volume. And we have, this is known, that's known now because we determined it in the titration and we can solve for our unknown and we can determine the exact concentration of our sodium hydroxide, okay? Now that we have that, now that we've got the molarity of the base nailed down, we can go to the next step and use it, use that sodium hydroxide in the same manner to determine the moles of citric acid, okay? Using that, uh, the stoichiometry of three to one. All right, stop me if you have a question. Um, okay. So where do we go next? Maybe do these in triplicate. That is, we're gonna we're gonna set up our 
We're going to set up our standardization of sodium hydroxide with acetic acid. We're going to do that titration three times. So in case one of them messes up, we'll have two that we can use to, for average. Um, and uh, then we'll do triplicates for the citric acid also, just so we can, we have three, we can throw one away if we have to. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to do some uh, discussion questions in pre-labs. I think the discussion questions are should be included with pre-labs, I believe. Calculate the volume of this. Yeah. Uh, consider in this particular lab, discussion questions and pre-labs are in the same session. You do those before you get to class. Um, let me look down here and see if there are post-lab questions. Yeah, there's a post-lab question. And there's a post there. One, two, three, four, five post-lab questions. Okay. So the pre-lab questions are going to be the discussion plus the one actually marked pre-lab. All right, so we can look at those. <clears throat> I think I have a um, a video in um, Brightface that shows a titration. So you can actually see a titration being done. Uh, if it's not a separate one, it might be buried in a, a, pre a former a previous discussion that I recorded and inserted that into the discussion. Um, and I could do that for this one too. No big deal. All right. Let's look at discussion question one. Okay. Calculate the volume. Calculate the volume of 0 0.750 molar sodium hydroxide solution required to titrate 25 milliliters of 0 0.873 molar acetic acid. Okay. So um, in this case, we're given the value for sodium hydroxide. And we're going to calculate the volume of sodium hydroxide required to titrate that others. So the best way to do this one is to say, all right, What's the molarity of the acid, the volume of the acid, the molarity of the base, the volume of the base? Right? Just so we don't get them mixed up. The molarity of the acid is 0 0.873 molar. The volume of the acid is 25 milliliters. The molarity of the base is 0 0.750 molar. And the volume of the base is our unknown. So, as long as the acid and the base are delivering one neutralizing unit, right? So the acid has one proton, the base has one hydroxyl. You can use this relationship. Okay. Molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid equals molarity of the base times the volume of the base. We can't use that one with citric acid because citric acid has three hydrogens. But this works great for uh, single proton and single hydroxides. So the molarity of the acid here is 0 0.873 molar. The volume, and in this case, we've got a ratio here. So the volume of acid doesn't have to be changed. That we can keep it 25 milliliters. That way, the answer of the volume of base will come out in milliliters. 0 0.750 molar and the volume of the base. Right, so we solve that one. Right, we just say these two times each other divided by that one. will give us the milliliters of base required to titrate that much acetic acid. 0 0.873, 25, and 0 0.75. 
and I get three significant figures. 29.1 milliliters of base. Okay. You could use this, this procedure right here. When you start to do the titration with base and acetic acid, you could use this titration, you could use this rela relationship, put 10 milliliters in there instead. And then put the actual, the nominal value for the base here. And then find out how many milliliters of base it should take. And then you go down like within maybe three milliliters of that real fast and stop and then go down slow. It can save you some time if you know what you're expecting to get. All right, that's one. Discussion one. Discussion two. Yeah, discussion two. Calculate the volume of 0 0.75 molar sodium hydroxide solution required to titrate 1.20 grams of citric acid. All right, let's see, what do we have? We have the um, molarity of the base is 0 0.750 molar. The mass of the citric acid is 1.20 grams. All right. Again, what's the equivalence here? The equivalence is the number, the moles of hydrogen and the moles of hydroxide. So this delivers the hydroxide, this delivers the hydrogen, right? Grams is not gonna get it. We need to know how many moles of citric acid we have. So what we need is convert this to moles of citric acid first. We need the molar mass of citric acid. Let's see, is it in the document? Uh, the formula's there. We need a value, actually we need the value, um, the nominal value of citric acid molar mass because we're gonna compare what we get in the lab to the, the accepted value. So let me see, if it's not here, then I need to figure it out. Ooh, boy, did I miss that. Phenolphthalein changes at pH 8.5, not 9.2. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see. I, I've got to calculate it here somewhere. Let's see. Where is it? Uh, here it is. Accepted value. 192.13. It's a big molecule. Okay. That'll give us the moles of citric acid. 1.2 divided by 192.13. So that's 6.246 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of citric acid. Okay. So how many moles of hydrogen ions is that? Times 3. Right. Three moles of hydrogen for every mole. Or if I, I'd be consistent, use it as a conversion factor. Right? This is for every one mole of citric acid, we get three moles of hydrogen ions. There we go. So three times that value gives us 1.874 times 10 to the minus two moles of hydrogen ions. Okay. Now, how many moles of hydroxyl do we need? Exactly the same. Right. Hydroxyl. Okay, now that we know that, we know also that um, the number of moles of hydroxyl equals 
the molarity of the base because it delivers one mole of hydroxyl for every mole of sodium hydroxide. So the molarity of the base times its volume. Okay, so we know that value. The problem was solving for the volume. So let's go ahead and solve for the volume. Volume of the base equals the moles divided by the molarity of the base. So we got 1.874 times 10 to the minus 2 moles divided by 0 0.750 molarity, which is moles per liter. Okay. So I divide that by 0.75, and I get 2.498 times 10 to the minus 2 liters. Uh, does it say milliliters? It doesn't. It just says liters. All right. Yeah. Well... If this is liters, what would that be in milliliters? Okay, I'm going to have to probably have these others. Liters, milliliters. How many milliliters in a liter? A thousand milliliters. So a thousand times that equals. 2.498 times 10 to the first, right? Three plus or minus one is plus one. That's milliliters. So if we put it in standard notation and we can have three significant figures, um, that's, let's see, 24.98. And we round it off to 25.0. Okay, it takes 25 milliliters to titrate this much citric acid using that base of this known concentration. All right, now we got some pre lab questions. A lot of this is repetitive, but you know. One way to memorize stuff and, and, and learn procedures is just do them over and over and over again. It's really monotonous. That's why I say your best friend in chemistry is curiosity and boredom. You get bored working these problems, then you probably know them pretty well. Okay, uh, let's see. Calculate the molarity of sodium hydroxide solution if 24.3 milliliters were required to titrate 25 milliliters of 0.873 acetic acid solution. This was pretty straightforward. Pre lab one. Okay. What are we given? Well, let's see. Uh, it looks like we're going to need the molarity of the base, volume of the base, molarity of the acid, volume of acid. In this case, they're one to one, so we can use that formula. Acid, uh, excuse me, volume of acid equals molarity of base, volume of base. Gotta hold this pen just right to get a good line. Okay, so the molarity of the base is. Unknown. <laughs> we don't know. The volume of the base is 24.3 liters. 24.3 milliliters, excuse me. Molarity of the acid is our old faithful A73 molar. And the volume of acid is 25 milliliters. By the way, how are we going to get? exactly or with 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 minimal error how are we going to get our 10 milliliters of uh acid delivered to that beaker 
so that we can titrate it with the base. We need another device. It's called a volumetric pipette. We haven't used that yet, have we? Okay. A volumetric pipette. They usually have a long thin stem and then a bulb down here. And then they finish it off with a stem down here and a fine tip. And then they have a marking right somewhere around in here. And that marking is the point at which you know that you will deliver a certain volume from this. That's pretty big. That's probably 100 milliliters. We're only using 10 milliliters. So for our purposes, this would be 10 milliliters of uh, solution. And these are to deliver. Okay. To deliver means that this thing is calibrated. So if you fill it up to that mark and then you take it over and deliver it into a vessel, whatever's left in the tip has been accounted for. What you actually delivered was 10 milliliters and you don't have to blow it out. They used to have pipettes called blowout pipettes to contain. And if it's too contained, you have to get up here with something. We used to do it with our mouth and blow it out. But we don't now. These are too deliver. Now, how do you fill that thing up? Well, you have you have a, your solution here. Right? Stick it in there. And you have a bulb up here. And I'll show you how the bulb operates. But it, it produces a negative pressure up here and draws the liquid up. You draw the liquid up in, into this point. Okay. And then the bulb usually has a, you just uh, release the valve and it stops. And then you pull this out of the solution. And you use a chem wipe and you wipe down the outside. You don't want anything clean to the outside. And then you uh, press this um, expel button on your bulb and it lets air back in and it drops down and you can control it very fine and you control it and control it until the meniscus hits that line and when it does then you want to just touch the tip to the inside of your beaker touch the tip and it, it removes any clinging drops now you're ready to deliver you take it over to your other vessel and you just uh, press the uh, deliver button or you just pull the bulb off the top and let it drain and it's calibrated to drain at a certain rate so that aqueous solutions will, will flow and drain off the walls. Right. You don't want it to go too fast or you'll leave, you'll leave beads up here. So it's, it's calibrated and designed to deliver at a, just the right rate. And once you do that, you've delivered, uh, in this case, 10 milliliters of solution. Okay, I'll show you how that operates when we go in the lab next week. All right, now that we have that, um, and these uh, volumetric pipettes come in different volumes. Like we, I do have some fives, tens, actually I have some ones, twos, threes, fives, tens, 25s, 50s, and 100s. So they're pretty handy. Okay, so we've got that information. Now we can use this formula. All right, so the base, this is gonna be unknown. And the volume of the base is 24.3 milliliters. Volume of the acid is 25 milliliters. And the molarity of the acid is 0 0.87. Okay. So now we just have to solve for this one. That one times that one divided by this one. Give us the answer. If we divide this and this, we're going to get a number bigger than one, aren't we? So that value is going to be greater than 0.873. If it's not, then we've made a mistake. 25 enter 24.3 divided times 0.873. So molarity of the base equals uh, three significant figures. 0 0.898 molar. Okay. Pretty simple. <clears throat> that was question one. I think there's a question two. 
Yeah, there it is right on the board. Okay, now for question two, we're going to calculate the molar mass. Here we call it the molecular weight of citric acid. If 25 milliliters of 0 0.750 molar sodium hydroxide, so the volume of base delivered is 25 milliliters. Concentration of the base is 0 0.75. molar um, and that's used to titrate 1.20 grams of citric acid so the mass of citric acid equals 1.20 grams okay so remember the prize molar mass equals mass per unit mole right we know what the mass is 1.20 grams we already got that now we need to calculate the moles. So how many moles of citric acid does this represent? Well, we know that the moles of base delivered is 25.0 milliliters times 0 0.75 molar. Okay, that's 0.75 and 25. This is 18.75 millimoles. Right? Milliliters times molarity is millimoles. But we need moles. So you can do it now or we can do it later. Right? We can convert this to moles. This is equal to millimoles of hydroxyl ions. Because there, for every one sodium hydroxide, there's one hydroxyl. But how many moles of acid does that represent? Well, for, it takes three of these for every one mole of citric acid. So actually, citric acid is one third of that. Okay. Or the if we use if we use that formula that's given to you at the very beginning, um, it's got three citric acids plus, well, uh, three hydrogens in this one mole of citric acid plus three hydroxyls, right? And that's um, three waters plus uh, sodium, three sodiums plus the rest of the citric acid molecule. That's abbreviated for you. So that means if we have this much hydroxyl, right, then the ratio, is for every three hydroxyls, you have one citric acid. Okay, that's why that's why we divide this by three. So now we get six point two five millimoles of citric acid. All right, we can't use millimoles in this calculation. It has to be moles. So how do we convert six point two five millimoles to moles. Well, milli equals 10 to the minus third, doesn't it? So it's 6.25 times 10 to the minus third moles. And we can put that up here. 6.25 times 10 to the minus third moles of citric acid. And we then we can calculate 1.2 and I get Uh, hold on a second. I did something wrong, didn't I? Yeah, I did. I mean, let me do it over again. 1.2 enter 6.25 exponent. There we go. I get 192 grams per mole. Based on that information that was given to us. Now let's see. What did we say the accepted value was? Yeah, 192.13. So this problem was probably reverse engineered. <laughs> we started from here, worked our way back to create a pre-lab question.
you, I would be very surprised if any of the teams get that close to the accepted value. I'd be pleased, but surprised. That all the pre-lab questions? Yeah, that's all the pre-labs. Okay. So um, here's the step-by-step. -step. We've got two procedures. One is standardize the sodium hydroxide, and the second is determine the molar mass of citric acid using that standard sodium hydroxide solution. And there they are, part one and part two. Post-lab questions. And let's see, does it have... I thought it had a, uh... no, it doesn't. If it was me, when I set up my lab notebook, I would look in there and see the materials that I'm going to use. And I go through the procedure and look for every material that's going to be required. Burettes, pipettes, um, solutions, whatever it is, be sure that's in the materials. Um, then for the data, I'd set up a table because you're going to have three replicates and you can do you can do your, your things across here and your replicates this way if you want or you can do your replicates this way. It doesn't matter. Uh, let's just say for argument's sake, we're going to do replicates across the top. Rep one, rep two, and rep three. These are three separate titrations called replicates. Okay, you're going to have, um, well, there's going to be one table for the sodium hydroxide standardization and one table for the citric acid. Right. So if we do the sodium hydroxide standardization, then we're going to have um, a volume of uh, Acetic acid, right? volume of acetic acid, and it should be the same for each one. Then we're going to have um, molarity of acetic acid, that should be the same for each one. Then we're going to have uh, volume, um, let's see, start volume of base and volume of base. Then volume of base uh, delivered. Right. That's just the the uh, the end minus the start. Right. So if the start if you start at zero, then the end minus zero is going to be this value. So that's the volume of, of sodium hydroxide. The rest of it would be calculations. Right, so if you want to put uh, something along here for calculations, you could say, all right, um, you could say moles of um, hydrogen ions delivered from this, and then moles of hydroxyl ions, which they should be exactly equal, and then you can use that to calculate uh, concentration. So molarity of the base, sodium hydroxide. That should get everything. And then you have that table set up, and you know this is the information you've got to put in there. And if you're missing any of that information, when you get down to some point, say, uh-oh, <laughs> stop. Hold everything. Dick Tracy cartoons. Okay, so that would be for the standardizing the base. Um, if we want to set up a table for the citric acid titration, we have three reps. Instead of the volume of the acid and the molarity of the acid now, we're going to have the mass of the citric acid, okay? 
uh, in grams. And then we're going to have the start volume, sodium hydroxide, end volume, delivered volume. Uh, actually, moles of hydroxyl. And if you want to put in here, you can put in the molarity of the sodium hydroxide. Uh, it's going to be the same for each three because you determined that in the first experiment. Then the moles of hydroxyl, now you want to convert that to the moles of acid. Right? So the moles of hydroxyl, tri hydroxyl actually equals the moles of acid, but you also want the moles of citric acid, which would be one third of that value. Because each citric acid delivers three moles of this. And then you can put down here um, the molar mass of citric acid. It would just be the moles of citric acid divided into the mass of citric acid. And you can have a thing there. That's how I would set up my, my lab notebook with that information. Then you'd be ready to roll. Okay. Um, let's see. Oh, um, I didn't put it for the first one where you where we were uh, standardizing sodium hydroxide, but maybe over here you could take the three values of the molarity of sodium hydroxide if, if they're all close together and calculate an average. In this case, it'd be an average uh, molar mass. In the case before, it'd be an average uh, molarity. You want to do that for the sodium hydroxide because that's the value you're going to use up here. Right here. From the previous one. And we'll take a look at your values. If you've got three good molarity values for sodium hydroxide, we'll keep all of them. But if one of them is, is flying off in the stratosphere, uh, and that happens, especially on the first titration, when you're not familiar with where you're going to end up, then sometimes you have to throw the first one away. Or you could set up four and just plan on throwing the first one away. Uh, just titrate it down and go down, just zoom on down until the, the paint uh, stays. And you can say, okay, that happened at about this volume. Let me go on the, on the, the other three reps. Uh, I'll stop up here and then come down slow. And that way you can save yourself some time. If you want to keep all three, fine. If you don't, then you can use the first one as your trial. Okay. We used to do that with uh, when we had lots of titrations to do, like 100, 200 in a day. We'd, we'd take one sample. They'd all be similar samples. we take one sample as a throwaway, and we find out what we were close to. And that way, each one, we come down, we just go, and then stop, and then slow it down, right down. Okay, take another one. <laughs> so there, there are methods. Now they've got automatic titrators. You just put your samples in a carousel and uh, put your solutions in it and turn it on and run away and do something else. That's what they probably do in, in uh, 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 med tech. No, uh, Ian, uh, no, not ENT. Oh. It'll come to me. Probably on my way home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's one of our programs. <laughs> Medical lab techs. Yeah, MLTs. Uh, everything's automated now. All your solutions come to you and prepackaged. Right. You just have to get your methods right. Uh, and there's something to be said for that. Takes all the fun out of it, though. <laughs> right? You don't get to make your own solutions. OK, any questions?